Welcome to CAFCast, everybody. It's great to have you back after such a long break. It's been insane. I know the wait has been... Oof. Anybody who loves content as much as like I do has been probably craving it, just like a little kid has been craving those munchies. Man. Anyways, today we got a great guest on board. Um, it's our new intern, Jordan Conway. I'm going to let him Yo, introduce himself to everybody else, so there you go. Hey guys, I'm Jordan. Uh, I met Cody. Uh, I want to say about eight years ago, man. Yeah, we, me and him, we go back for quite a bit. I, want, I can't really remember like exactly the setting of how we first met, but um, but uh, um, yes, <laughs> we we I do remember personally. We, we <laughs> met like way back in the day, and this is when I was like younger. I was actually a kid, and we were playing like World of War video games because I was like addicted to getting like high competition scores on zombies like that was like my goal like i would do like the zombie rape chains every day my man like i i was an addict my parents hated me i was like yo i'm gonna be a pro gamer i'm gonna do youtube content or some stuff like that you know like but you know hey what can i do i gotta, I gotta i'm stuck doing this can't complain nobody listens to me oh well yeah, it's crazy how our focus has really changed from uh, creating, uh, wanting to create the highest score in zombies to now trying to expand our business and <laughs> try to actually make something of ourselves. So it's cool how we like kind of progress past that, man. Um, I came on to the scene maybe just about like a couple weeks ago. I really don't have much marketing experience, but uh, Cody, with his infinite words of wisdom, uh, <laughs> reached out his hands it's towards me and just. <laughs> Yeah, man. He like reached out. He's like, Jordan, I am here to teach you. <laughs> and essentially, like, he just asked me the question of, hey, do you want to join the team? And um, me, honestly, like not knowing anything about this shit. Uh, like, personally, I didn't even have a fucking Instagram when I started. Like, I'm gonna be honest. So <laughs> when Cody so this, called me, this is just an example, okay? This is an example for everybody who says, "Oh, I don't really know how to do it." No, it, it doesn't fucking matter, okay? It's no. it's work ethic. Like yeah. I, that, that's my like real talk moment right here. It's work ethic. <laughs> yeah, dude, I totally agree with you on that one. Like half the time, half the battle, and I want to say maybe even a little bit more than half is to just fucking do it. Just put yourself out there, and that's essentially what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of diving into the deep end of the pool and not really knowing what's going to happen or what's the results going to come of it. But I'm just optimistic and really passionate about uh, really getting results. So I am here to uh, do my best. Yeah, exactly. You got to be as excited on door one as you're excited on door 101. You know, you got to have that same motivation coming out with the same energy, regardless of where things are. Like, for the past few weeks, I've been irritated because I haven't been able to get a podcast out. Now that I got it out, my energy's off the walls. I'm like a killer shit <laughs> ride. Yeah. Um, Let's go, bro. <laughs> I, got, I got a pretty couple of things that are coming up that are pretty exciting. And me and Jordan have been just talking about a bit of technology because he's located in California, San Francisco, which is basically the tech world. But also the funny thing about the tech world is – it's not really the creator of some of the biggest tech companies. It's some of these geniuses in garages, you know, hint, hint. I'll let you uh, click the reference there. If you get it. <laughs> but um, a lot of people started from very different humble beginnings and all came together there to develop better and new programs. And we just wanted to talk a bit about how technology is kind of like a landscape. Like we've noticed that internet and like 3G, well, 3G kind of ties in with internet basically providing this kind of service is a landscape. It's a whole new landscape where you're able to get your words more efficiently out. Like, think about this. If you were able to walk and talk to one person and that one person was able to deliver basically 10 other people to you, would you do that? Yes, you would. You'd always do that. You do that 100% over talking to one person who's going to tell one other person to get your content out there. And that's what internet does. It basically amplifies our communication network to a whole new level and yeah. this is for like sorry for me like continuing the rumble on and uh, make sure you know conway can't talk at all that's <laughs> pay for him right now but um it it's really what are you gonna say about that like it's it's, it's really pretty insane how big it's impacted us 
Yeah, man. Uh, I really feel like uh, us as humans are always trying to find ways to be in two places at once, you know, uh, although some may really like to try, like, it's essentially, like, never the case uh, in real life. Uh, actually, like, going using the internet as a tool to, like, basically, like you said, amplify this experience and, like, uh, the opportunities that we can get it's endless and i know you like i know you cody like the technology nerd always mentioning the use of ai and how that's basically the next step to our future essentially the next step to our communications essentially communicating without having to be there and maybe like you'd like to go a little bit more into that one okay so the reason why ai i think is going to be kind of the next thing yeah they're going to take some of our jobs but people are going to do jobs that ais can't do there's always going to be something that we can do. We're a very creative species to begin with. We're something that has a very creative mind that gets to create a bunch of different content. You know, some of us may not be that good on that, but we have marketers who are good at getting it out there. So what's wrong with a nerd combining with a marketer to help basically create a social network that's just going to increase the productivity of that, getting it out there. But I'm going to say this, marketers ruin every single platform. So will AIs be the dominant marketing platform? No, they'll be solving bigger crises or bigger problems, I think, later down the run. What now I think is using it is basically the public commerce. The reason why we're using it is because it's going to make us money. And that's, that's the simplest thing. It's going to cost less. This is how so many other big companies get big is because they take advantage of an opportunity that presents itself and going all in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's business. You got to take risks. Marketers ruin platforms, so platforms evolve to the next step. So it's always yeah. being there. Yeah, man, we're not the we're not the creators of anything. Essentially, we're just like you know getting the word out there. We're the middleman in a lot of these situations, and that's why like the technology that is being produced could really like influence this uh kind of movement that's going on about like how the game's changing and how like the old fashioned like what was once new is now becoming old. You know, it's just this interesting transition that you see. And uh, you really need to, like, catch the wave, if you understand what I'm saying. Kind of, like, understand the flow of where – in the direction of where a lot of things are going based off this. And that's really how you, like, catch on to, like, a lot of these rifts, you know, and be successful at it. It's watching a bit of historic patterns. And exactly. And seeing how it revolves and always comes back to it and really catching on to that. And then when you catch that – giving value to somebody else like the reason why us middlemen are able to be so successful or us entrepreneurs or us people that put out a content or market this stuff and media companies that try to produce their own stuff and get it out there on this new network is because we know how people work but we don't take credit to actually know how people work technically you know mm -hmm. like what i just said they're kind of is contradicting itself but i'm gonna explain it a little bit on this when we put out content, we're putting out other people's content that creates basically a funnel and a word of mouth stretch. Word of mouth means it's going to get it out there if it's good content. And I do apologize for that slight uh, malfunctions on my end. Uh, what was I talking about? Um, I believe the last time you said was uh, something about the tra transitions of uh, marketing and how basically, uh, you know, catching on to like kind of sort of a wave of, uh, of okay. information that everyone's talking yeah. about. It's, and I was talking about how I was basically contradicting myself. Um, yeah, that Basically, giving out information and giving value is creating something that's worth something to somebody else. And when I say value, it has to be something relative in that field of audience. So it has to be towards the people that actually care about that type of content. And then it has to be produced well. It has to look clean. It has to look nice. And it has to have a creative spin to it. Something that makes it unique and weird and strange because humans love new. And we all try to strive to be something special. Yeah, it's either be something special, or it's be something that it makes day to day life more efficient and more fast so that we save time. It's those two things. So depending on what category of content you're trying to get out there, it really depends 
on those two things? And how can you give value to the public so they actually give a crap on who you are? Are you trying to build a brand story? Are you trying to build a brand face? Are you trying to market your product because it's a product? Or are you trying to market your service on how your people? How are you going to get involved with the community? How are you going to build a fan base? And these are very big questions. And what I really got to say is offer leverage and employ empathy. And when I say employ empathy, I say hit up people's Instagram DMs, okay? Take down notes, my boys. Take down notes. Take down scriptures, you know. Let the scribes do the scribe thing, you know. Respect. Respect. And hit up the DMs. Hit up people that have 5,000, 10,000. Hit up. Start reaching out. Get projects. Start reaching out. Hey, I want to be on your podcast. Yo, hit me up. You know, this is this is an opportunity for anybody who wants to be on my podcast. Hit me up, and I'll take a few of you guys, and we'll get on a few shows, and we'll do a few shows together talking about basically the entrepreneurship, where I'm trying to head with my company, and what you're doing with your life, and what you're trying to get out there. I'm really trying to be a word of mouth so people can talk about more of their content and how to do it the most efficient way. So I want to bring on other marketing legends. I want to bring on music artists so they can talk about their creativity and what they plan to do and just give off a few ideas. Jordan's here because he's our new intro. He's soaking up all the information like a sponge. And like we're going to have yeah, him man. a lot more like involved in the conversation. I just I really want to hammer these things home and really have people understand that it's offering value to people. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, man. Uh, I always notice, like, uh, I mean, I think you brought up an interesting point, though, uh, earlier before. You mentioned something how, like, uh, we as people naturally tend to, like, not look towards information. You know, how we're always just kind of looking for, like, the thing that entertains us, that wow factor. And I noticed you, like, getting into a lot about uh, giving value and, like, the information that people want. But essentially, I always feel like, you know, when you're posting out content, it's also, like, kind of balancing out that kind of appeal to it that wow factor that shock that's really like gets people's attention you know what i mean and that's why i noticed that a lot of things that are trending and a lot of the aspects that really are make that, that make a post popular is something that really just kind of sticks in your memory so now i always feel like i'm trying to balance out the difference between you know giving out the information that people need and that people require while also appealing it to that so that they want it at the same time now, let me ask you this that can maybe answer a bit of that question. Mm. What interests you in this? Um, what interests me in this? You know, I really want to say, like, what interests me in this was, like, just because how new everything was to me. Like I said before, I didn't even have, like, I wasn't really involved much with social media up until this point. And I'm really, like, taking a stance and towards really using it as my advantage. Because I noticed, like we said, catching trends okay. and catching wait, 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 wait. Let's go back there. What did you say? Oh. You're using this as what? As a tool. You didn't say it as that, but that's what I was going to say. Uh, you use this as an advantage, that it makes it a tool. You're completely correct, my man. And what does that give you? What happens when you have a tool? So let, let me give you an example. I have okay, a flip phone and an iPhone. What are the advantages? The access to information, like, it just, it's tremendous well, compared well, to an iPhone. What else? Who cares about information? I'm some kid. What else? What does it do? Uh, um, connects people more. Okay. That's one thing. But what is the biggest thing it does? All right, I'll answer this question. It saves you time. The most valuable resource to humans. Mm. It gives you something that is more efficient than the previous product. It is used as an advantage. Why are you going to use a hammer when you can use a power hammer? Why are you going to do something that's going to take 15 hours when you could do it in five minutes? Mm. Work smart, not long. But at the same time, being self-aware to things you like. Okay, now you know what you like. All right, you got that shit under control. Okay, how am I going to excel at this in the world that we live in and today? How am I going to excel and get what I want from this? How can I make the system bend to my will? Okay, that's one way of looking at it. Next way is don't let the thing that you love seduce you. Build a business around it. Look how other people interact with this and do something a part of it. You know, 
some people look at freaking playing basketball or the New York Jets. Here's Gary V example. Hashtag Gary V right out there. You know, hashtag shot him out all the time, like all over my hand. But um, <laughs> Gary V, he realized at a very young age that you know, fuck, I'm not going to be a New York Jets player. So what else am I going to do? Fuck, I'll buy them then. If you want to be a part of something, if you want to do something, if you want to achieve something, then find the way that you can do it. The best way that complements what you're good at. And if you don't know what you're fucking good at, if you don't know what you are, you are, if you're not self-aware of it, then find somebody who can help you. Because being self-aware will save you so much time, and that is the most valuable resource to us. And then it's about just executing Executing, 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 executing. That's why I'm so driven. But, Jordan, besides that, mm. my man, what have you learned from me in the past? You know, what have you basically taken to skill and taken to heart and what you think is actually impactful and you would actually give them to other people um i really feel like two big factors like playing to the role of any uh results or any success that a lot of people experience and that comes with uh one just the ambition the persistence i mean like co- like this guy cody bro like he's so fucking persistent like throughout like most of the shit that he goes through you know between you know issues at home or like issues of sometimes not even having a home like he's still out there working and hustling you know he's still putting himself out there to you know help me out put uh you know putting his taking a risk on me uh and while still offering value to the customers that like come on to him and the people that come on to his company so the first one definitely is persistence like without it you will fail almost indefinitely because yeah, because you will all, always come across problems. You're always going to have, like, struggles. Like, as there is no comparison to, like, other people. Like, everybody struggles virtually, you know, in some way, shape, or form. And now the other thing I want to, like, mention, which I think is key to more, like, more than anything, is just that inner belief that you can do it, that you can go get something. Like, just getting rid of all self-doubt, all negative thoughts, and really, like, just trying to push your agenda onto the world without and not and, and like still taking the criticism still learning from what people say but not letting that put you down and kind of just putting your head forward and just <laughs> continuing to push your ideas out there into the world so i think those are the two main things i definitely learned from you was that the persistence and then also having the confidence and ability to uh, believe in yourself and know that you can get something done I'm gonna say this. This is a this is a rough a rough reference. A rough a rough reference. Hey. <laughs> Second doubting is the same as lying. That's that's a rough, a rough. I can't even fucking pronounce his name. It's R U S S S. It's so Russ. simple. So fucking simple. When I'm fucking feel, feeling like a fifth grader. Feels bad, man. <laughs> um. But. Yeah, like, second doubting is basically one of the biggest curses because you need to believe in yourself so strong that you can convince yourself this is going to work above everything else. You need to visualize it. You need to want it. And you need to have the persistence to know that, fuck, I'm going to do this no matter what. Like, if it's not this... I'm going to hit it in a different angle, but it's going to be this. It's going to be some way being involved with this. My, my yeah. original goal when I was younger, when I was 12 years old, was to be involved with YouTube or eSports or video games. Is that still my goal? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. I want to buy an eSports team. Eventually, you know. Uh, you know, maybe maybe I can be Rick's Fox type. You know, maybe maybe I could do that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but it, it's a day that will come. So what, what can I take from the experiences that I've learned right now and put that into motion to create the action and the results that I want? Because there's always opportunity. There's always people to learn from. There's always opportunity 
to advance yourself once you find something that you like. And it's finding those mentors or those teachers when you're younger to help you really develop some of the skills so you can go down the path, not completely blind, hitting your axe on a tree, cutting down a path into basically a swamp instead of actually following a path that's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. But we all have to go off the path to make our own path up at one point. We have to develop it with the creation and with the help that we've taken from the people that have helped us there. And either we're going to be successful or we're going to fail. But the market doesn't give a fuck who we are. It cares what we do. So it depends on what we give to people. But I'm, I'm going to say this. With technology, how it's changing, how everything is completely evolving on such a different level, it's pretty insane. I'm just going to say this. What would we do if we didn't have internet? What alternative sources of technology or ways of communicating would we use, Jordan? Man, a world without Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, but like, say, say, what would be the next technology? Like, AIs are coming out. We have basically virtual reality, so not soon far we're going to have probably alternative like reality what happens if somebody uses different coding programs differently it's not like the internet and it's used off a different basic programming code you know yeah uh it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a very interesting topic definitely and i feel like you know what if there's potential other platforms other than the internet to provide information that are more you know independent more you know, reliable and also less expensive too i think that's where we're going to see a lot of in the future you know potential change there you go jordan said something very key independent why is bitcoin so successful because it's independent it's independent it's independently run so if you have trust in a person that's actually running it and you know their actual agenda or they document themselves wouldn't that make it so much easier to follow somebody if you can't really do propaganda because they show you their everything. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I'm doing. Like, nobody's going to be able to build propaganda. I, I fucking know my faults. Well, well, bitch, I swear. Mm, sorry. Mm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Did I hurt your feelings? I'm sorry. Maybe that makes me a little too aggressive, but... I... I just... I, I really... I need, I just need people to realize this thing and like it doesn't hurt me if you don't want to do it it's just being honest about it it doesn't hurt me with any of those choices what it hurts yourself is those choices in the end what I don't like are the people that are faking it and showing it to the world you know yeah because like it, ta it takes a lot and it doesn't happen overnight and it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of dedication. It's not easy peasy. Working online is not it's super super fun all the time. You really gotta love this to want to be able to do this, and it doesn't take one night to do it. Like no, I've been at this it, for six months now. Yeah, this, it's been, a process. It's a long process. I worked in esports. I was gonna get on TSN. All these things were gonna happen. That's what I was told. And you know what? You know what happened. One of the owners stole the money, and boom, this is where I'm in. So what am I going to do with the situation? Am I going to let it take me down? Am I going to let it bring me down? Or am I going to use this opportunity to grow myself as a human being? And this is where I want to hit home with a lot of people. Find the thing you fucking love. The thing that you would give everything to do it every single day of your life. Find it. If you don't know what it is, try everything. Don't waste your time. Really, don't waste your time trying to feel numb and other stuff like that. Find something that can impact either other people or yourself that will make you happy. You don't like noble shit? Okay, you don't like noble shit. Don't do noble shit. You, you, like, you like noble shit? Then do noble shit. But find the thing that makes you happy and go for 100%. I don't condone, though, killing or any of that shit because I don't... That's, that's disgusting. That's, that, that's monstrosity, you know? Like, that, that real talk, though. Like, real talk. Like, no, no, no. But, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie with everything else. Like, Pushing this agenda and really going for what you want has to be your main priority because that's the only thing you can trust in the world is your dream. And if you give up on your dream, you settle into a system and you follow it. Why do you have the right to complain? 
Are you out there making the changes you want to see in the world? And like, it's not to be mean, it's just people have it worse than you and you don't realize it. It's too hard. Like we got easy game mode over here. Like I am so fucking privileged. I have a fucking two great loving parents. Two great loving parents that help me out. I love the death. I love them to death. Okay. We can't blame the situations that we were put in or given for the results that we are. We have to take ownership of everything. Even if it is somebody else's fault, like, fuck, that happened with the investment. I was the one who landed the investment. I shouldn't have the belief in this guy. Could I have known this was coming? No. But it's my fault, and I learned to be more careful with how I go about working with business and working with other people because of this. And I've taken this as an advantage to use my ability to teach other people, like showing Jordan here, like, tips and tricks and showing him because he's a new intern and he's looking to increase his own knowledge. And so you got to be careful with some of the information that you want to give out because some people will be like, oh yeah, that's a shit idea. And then go around like two months later, produce your idea and take the money for it because they're greedy. Like I, I will leave money on the table for other people because if it's their idea, it's their idea. I'm not going to take credit for that shit. But like, I I'm going to keep driving it home. Go for the things you want to do. No matter, your, no matter if your mom doesn't like it, no friends don't like it, no matter if people don't like it. Like, fuck, I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather my parents hate me for right now for what I do and, like, live down the road when I'm successful and they're happy for me because I did this. I'm going to be a lot happier instead of doing what they want me to do and going through all the process where I'm going to be fucking miserable. And then at the end of it, I'm going to still be fucking miserable. Yeah, they might be happy later down the road, but, you know, I'm going to be always upset blaming them, saying, oh, what? I never got to be able to do the dream I wanted. I'm doing this life. And, you know, it's constant problems. It never, ever goes away. I'm going to have resent. So why not suffer right now and make the choice to go for the things that you want and take the risk? You only have one fucking life. The odds of being a human being that Gary V said, like, is one to 400 and trillion. One in 400 and trillion, my man. Like, do you understand how crazy that is? Yeah, that's insane. So, what I would say to people is take advantage of it. And I know how hard it can be. And I understand. And CAF is always open if anybody needs to reach out for anybody who's struggling, who wants to talk about any of their problems. And if we can help, we can help. But, like, People need to stop complaining and start taking actions to start helping themselves. Because I can show yeah. you to the water, but I can't force you to drink it, my man. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough serious conversation from us. Um, CAFCAST has loved to have you here. Your audience is our oxygen, as always, stolen from Gary Vee. Um, give that five star, you know, like that shit, subscribe, follow us, turn the notifications 